So I've put my base coat of Eschen Grey down. Um, I really suggest at this stage using an airbrush because it helps give you really kind of nice natural gradients and uh, kind of highlighting. Um, at this stage it's not too important but I still think it's quite useful because I do some minor highlighting even at this stage. Um, so when I'm using the airbrush, uh, the GW paints are too thick for the airbrush so you need to thin it down. Um, you could just use water or kind of professional um, airbrush thinners. Um, but I quite like using the Lamian medium because I've already got plenty of it for my regular painting and it does the job just fine. So when I was putting the coat down, I tried to be as even as possible. Um, though there's some areas where, like I said, I've done a kind of natural highlight already and that's on the kind of under shadows um, areas. So if you can just see here, let me try and get a close up view. You can just see slightly right in the corner, there's a darker area. So I kind of deliberately didn't spray that bit just to create a natural shading in the model already, even at this early stage. So it's quite subtle, but will become more prominent as I build up the extra layers of highlight. Because as you can see, it's quite dark at the moment because uh, it's actually slightly transparent and it's showing some of the black through. But obviously, as you do more and more layers, that becomes more prominent. So I could just keep putting down Eschen Grey and this would become a lighter grey just as I go, just by default. Um, so I always refer to a previous tank that I've painted just as a guide so I don't overspray um, this tank and so the colour schemes aren't mismatched. So I tend to do two to three coats of the Eschen Grey um, and then that seems to be about right. With the bulldozer, I actually ended up masking this off first. So that's the front of the bulldozer blade, but I did paint up the back. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use a modelling masterclass uh, from those Forge World books. Um, there's a special technique for doing bulldozer blades, like weathering techniques that I want to try out. Um, but I figured I only need to do that on the front because um, that's where kind of all the impact is going to be. Uh, so I'll do kind of my more traditional weathering technique on the back. Um, and then lastly, with the heavy weapons, all I did was use a bit of all the central blue tack. That's just to secure it in place, because when I'm using an airbrush, otherwise um, they just fly off all over the place. So that or use the technique that I talked about in one of my other videos um, that's uh, using kind of either double sided sticky tape or kind of uh, masking tape, but where it's sticky side face up and that way you can kind of secure um, small little bits and items in place. One thing I did realise that when I was spraying these with the Eschen Grey is I actually didn't need to do that at all because the front part of the bolter is going to be painted black and then the back part is going to be uh, painted brown because it's kind of like a leather tarpaulin type of material. So I didn't need to spray those in the first place um, but I did with the heavy flamers. So at this stage I've just put the Scab and Blight Dinge down. Um, this time it's a much more subtle natural highlight. I've still kept a lot of the Eschring Grey base colour visible and I've just concentrated the Scab and Blight Dinge in kind of top panels and side panels where there's kind of a large flat area. So for example this track guard um, section here and again this section here. Um, I've kind of really tried to concentrate it on all the bits where the kind of the sun will naturally be kind of reflecting off of. So again, on the kind of filter and these uh, sealed lasgun sections. So you can see it's slightly built up more just in these panels and the top sections. On the side panels, I mostly built up the areas where there's these flat panels. So here and here, for example, and again, same here and little just areas here to break it up. So you get this kind of natural gradient going throughout. And again, it's a quite a subtle effect. And the more you build up detail and the more this paint process goes, so you'll end up with quite a realistic finish. You don't want to do harsh contrast and over highlight. Um, lots of people do kind of like a super airbrushed technique, which I'm not a fan of personally. And at this stage, you need to rebuild your model just to make sure the colour gradients and the kind of consistency of the colour is um, consistent throughout. So for example, the turret I'm spraying separately from the main hole, 
but obviously I don't want one to be too much brighter than the other. So at this stage, it's always good to kind of put everything together and just compare. So I've just finished with the Dawnstone Grey. I've been building this onto the Scavenblight Dinge while still keeping as much of the Eshrin Grey uh, visible as possible. I've just taken the turrets off so you can see here the difference between the gradients. So along this little side bit here, you still have a lot of the Eshrin Grey. And in the middle of the panel, you have the Dawnstone and this kind of Scavenblight Dinge is the kind of transition color between the two. Um, keeps it nice and subtle, um, no kind of stark contrast between the two. I've also used it to kind of highlight a few areas. So I made sure to put more on the um, lasgum areas and the filter. And again, this is just a draw of the eye to a few kind of key details. I did a similar thing on the side panels, but I obviously did it less because it's um, not where the light will be falling because the light will be coming down onto these top panels. So as you can see, I've still kept it quite subtle and but building up again in the middle of the panel areas. That's it in terms of the base colors. It was quite quick for me to do because I had an airbrush. Uh, without it, I couldn't have really got the kind of subtle shading down and it would have actually been a lot more time consuming to have done. And you get kind of a nice thin coating of the paint down without any brush strokes. Next steps I've got are kind of transfers and weathering. Uh, so I will see you shortly.